Welcome to Programming for Newbies. My introduction to Qt C++ framework for Visual Studio. Now Qt uh, framework is uh, a cross platform. It works on multiple platforms, not just Windows. Uh, so I want to introduce it to you guys for Windows uh, and for Visual Studio. Um, I'm going to show you how to download, install, uh, and then we're going to create a quick application and run it and then show you some troubleshooting within Windows uh, that you may run into. So let's get started. So start your favorite browser and go to, to your favorite search engine and type in download Qt. For me, I use Google and here's my the top of the uh, this is qtio slash download qt.io slash download that's where it is right now and I, I'd say use the search engine because Qt uh, has been exchanging owner quite often recently. There was once Nokia, there was Digia, and there was um, what's the other company? I forget. Uh, but it's like three or four companies already been around. Anyhow, uh, more on that some other time. But uh, click on the download Qt. It takes you to download uh, the Qt.io/download page, and then there's four version right now. Um, what you want is the community no license fee version. Click on the download. It'll take you to his recommend uh, recommended download. Um, don't use that because we're doing this for Visual Studio. And what we're gonna do is click the view all downloads, and then scroll down to the bottom and look for the offline installer right here. Off oof, offline installer. And go down to Windows Host. And then pick the one that has the Visual Studio that you are using. For me, I'm using 2010, and I only have one choice. And for you guys who are running 2012 as well, but 2013 has options. Okay. So um, just pick the appropriate one for your Visual Studio. Uh, 2008, it's not listed here, but you can probably find it. Somebody may have it somewhere if you search for it specifically or you can download the source code of Qt and then uh, recompile it for 2008 um, and the reason I say that is because 2008 is uses a what is it the VC runtime version is different 2010 is VC 10 2008 I believe is VC 9 and then 20, 2005 even older is a VC 8 so you have to recompile the Qt uh, in those Visual C version um, to be compatible. I won't get into that right now because that's that's actually pretty complicated. You just go ahead and search for that if you you need to do those things. Uh, okay, so let's assume you download it. Click on one of the version you want. Click download, and I'll scroll down to the bottom here more under other downloads, and you need to get the vis uh, Visual Studio add-in. Uh, for Qt5. Click on that to download. Alright. Now we want to pause the video and then we want to wait for everything to download and then install Qt the, for Windows and then install the add-in after. Okay, not before. Alright, so click play to continue. Uh, and it's start Visual Studio. Let's I'm going to assume everything's installed and you did it correctly and you start Visual Studio for the first time in Visual Studio you will see a Qt5 menu show up and then go down to Qt options and click on that uh, right now I have my version on here 5.3.2 you want to add your version click the add button here and this will come up and then click this browse button to browse to your version that you install my version is this, yours pointed to yours, the root of yours, you don't want to point it to the root of that, like that is not right, you want to point it to the root of that version, just above the bin, so like if you see bin, that's you don't want to go there, you want to go just, just the one above bin, and that's the root of the version that you want, okay, you pick anywhere up here is not going to work, that's too far up, and you don't want to go too far down, okay, so click OK, 
and click OK and then it will create a name for you if you didn't fill one in um, and then you can pick from those two which is your default right now I'll pick that as my default okay and click OK 503.2 so now you're ready to be able to create a project and so go ahead and click new project here uh, for my visual studio 2010 I have that I believe all the others is are, are the same if not you can just do file new project all the same um, and don't worry about anything else for uh, whatever the other stuff is you know framework sort it um, you click the QT5 project and then here's the QT application is what we want we're gonna call this a test app uh, you can put it wherever you want you can change your path and let's assume we've done that click OK wizard will come up click next here it shows the three core library that it, uh, it needs so it checks so there's other ones there you want to check that you want to use um, it helps you kind of like puts it together without you having to remember what they are okay uh, click next and here it shows you all the name of the class the file um, and then your base class for your window I'm gonna you have Q widget and Q dialog as the other option but we'll stick with Q main window click finish and then it will create your project and add all the files it needs for this uh, application so it adds all the um, th the file necessary for your application and so under your project here test app you have your form your header files your generated files the resource file and your main source file what we want to do is open up your form first your test app UI double click on that it'll bring up your QT designer with your um, your widget here this is your main window this is what it looks like so let's say we fill in the uh, the file menu uh, and exit so file menu file exit help um, about and that's that's one way to edit your your uh, menu really quick you can drag and drop you can put your push button in there if you want whatever you want all these drag and drop widget option similar to dot net um, in, in, in uh, the drag and drop feature um, from a designer uh, and I'm going to save that the only difference here is Qt uses a signal and slot system which is more or, more or less events so we're going to do we're going to connect the exit event to close to tell that um, here's the name of action your our exit ev action menu okay I'm going to pick that and then the signal that it's going to put out it's called trigger so anytime you user click on that menu it's, it's going to fire a trigger so a trigger happened and then the objects are going to receive is the window it's called the test app class and then the slot is under a close we're going to tell it the close that's all and that's an easy way to connect the, the a menu to uh, an al already existing feature of a window in this case a widget close and we have to write code to, to close it so there we have it we're done with that so we're going to save and we'll exit uh, close that when we go back to you um, Visual Studio. Let's check out the header file. Here's pre pretty much the basic Qt stuff. It's all pre-generated by Qt for you. Note that you know it's got the proper includes. It's got the proper if defined to make sure that the header file doesn't get uh, you know uh, duplicated when when you include it. Uh, you can, this is another way to do the same um, pragma once. Uh, if you use Pragma once, it's it's it prevents the compiler from including the same header twice, and and, and by doing this, you do practically the same thing. Um, um, and then here's the automatically include of a UI the test app that H, which is a generated header file, right here, which is to get generated when you build. So all this gets filled in from what's in the UI. Okay, everything from the UI gets put in here. And then that's what you use at one time when, you, when this gets run. That's the code that, that, that gets generated from a UI file. Okay. Um, more on that later. 
and then here's our main implementation so we have our UI member variable and then we just call setup UI and we give the parent this and that's pretty much it that's how it connects the, uh, the the relationship of the widget to this widget to the parent main window uh, object uh, runtime and then here we have our main which is our main uh, entry point for you know C++ and inside there this is when when the code execute execute here create instance of the queue application create instance of our window we show it and then we just this is the event loop so and that that's pretty much it that's all it is for a simple QT application so we're gonna go ahead and click this to kind of shortcut building it and then running at the same time and it's gonna tell us do you want to build yes and then we're gonna let it build once it finished building uh, be real quick it'll run it and there we have it here's our application pretty simple straightforward I hope uh, here's our file exit menu help about I didn't do anything to that so click on it that won't do anything but if I click on exit it will close the dialog and exit the event loop and then boom the debug and stop and that concludes it uh, the running of it within Visual Studio so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to where we have it built okay this is where I have it and here is the application now let's say you wanna run that by double clicking on it <coughs> boom holy cow it ain't gonna work because it's missing some library why is that because Windows can't find the library in these because it's built somewhere else. Now the only reason why Visual Studio works is uh, you're familiar with the debugging of Visual Studio. Under debugging, the environment path was already set for you. It knows what the Qt dir is, and the Qt dir was defined by you uh, when we did this here. This was defined here, and basically that's what it did. It put that path inside of there, and so that's what we want to do outside of Visual Studio okay so if you do uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of Windows environment and how to set it up uh, so that your application can run outside of Visual Studio so uh, there's like three ways you can do this you can drop the Qt uh, DOL into where the application is uh, is one way to do it uh, the other way is you can set the path to where it lives in your development environment you really want to set the path to where it lives because you don't want to be changing that so uh, how do you do that there's a couple ways here you can create a bat file which is kind of like local to you spe and specific to your app a batch file is very specific in terms of not changing the environment for the uh, for everybody or even for your, your global environment for the system um, uh, so I'm going to talk about creating one right now, real quick. So I'm right click, so, uh, and go to new and create a new text file, text document, and we're going to call it run app dot bat. All right. And so, but the problem here is this: my file is still considered text document. It's not a bat file. Okay. Even though I name it, but the problem here is my file extension is not shown, so I can't change it. So I need to change that. So I need to go under the Explorer and go on Organize, go to Folders and Search Option. Pick that under the View tab. Okay. I want to uncheck the thing here called where it hides extension for known file type. Uncheck it. Okay. Uncheck and click OK. Okay. There it is. Now my file extension is shown. So I want to do is right click on it, go to Rename. Okay. I want to rename it and just remove the .txt and the Windows is going to ask me are you sure yes because now it's a Windows batch file see that Windows batch file and what that means is when you double click on it it's going to run like a command so what we want to do now is right click on it go to edit run app okay we want to set the path environment to include the QT path. So when I say set is the command space path equals to percent path percent. Percent path percent is a reference is a variable reference to the variable called path. So we want to grab the value of the original path and we're going to concatenate it with a semicolon. So it's every path is separated by a semicolon. And we want to add the path 
to where we look we find the DOL and all the DOL lives in here so there's all the QT5 DOLs look you see that yeah, there's core and so on okay and it's under the bin of this root and we want to specify the full path to the bin because that's where we want Windows to look for the DOL when we run and we're just going to paste it right here at the end okay so we're going to set the path basically tell them Windows include that in the path when it looks for DOLs for this application that runs. So when we run test app exe and then save it. Okay, then we're gonna go back and then we're gonna run it now. Double click it, boom, and there it is. Our application just show up. And then our file menu, our help menu, and then click help exit and everything goes away. Alright? So in some places, what happened is that may not work. You may not be able to create your batch file because, well, security policies. So in your work environment, I know that's one of those things that can happen is uh, your, your, your policy is very restrictive and you can only do it in a certain place. Or uh, you might be only allowed to run if you run as administrator. Right-click on it and say run as administrator, and boom, it comes up as well. So uh, if you're having issues, uh, check your path. Make sure there's no conflicting path. You have multiple version of uh, Qt. And now, the order of this path that shows up on here is the order that Windows searches for it. So if there's a DOL that is called the same thing that is looking for, it, and it can't load it, then that may be the problem. So you might need to change the order. You might need to put this path in the front, um, um, and just in case, you know. Or you can make sure your environment is clean if you know how to do that. So if you close down these this prompt, it won't exit your application because this is a Windows application. It doesn't need that prompt to stay up. Um, so we're going to click the X to exit as well, and that works just as well. But there's a still a problem here. We still can't run it by double-clicking. Okay, The only way to fix that, well, actually, it's not the only way. It's one of the ways to fix it is set an environment in your environment. Set your path in your environment and, and in Windows 7 you can just say ENV and go edit environment okay from a, for your account and it'll come up this and what you want to do is if your path is not already there you can just say path create a new one and call path and add that full path to the bin of the QT folder into there and click OK and click OK and now I'll run it and then it should find it just the same so we basically just did the same thing in the batch file inside the environment. That's one way. So, uh, yeah, again, that's an option. Uh, but, again, your policy, your system security policy may not allow for that even, for you to even go in there to edit your environment. So, this option may not be an option at all uh, in some places. So, I'm just going to delete mine. Um, but, uh, if that doesn't work, um, what you can do is you can bring those DOLs that it needs uh, into um, the directory of where your executable lives and then uh, it will work. So for example we need qtgui.d because we're running a debug and then we need qtcore.d and then I believe the other one is qtwidget. Uh, we just copied those three files and I believe into the same directory, okay, and we can s then we will show it the run. Nope, there's more stuff in here, like the IC, UI, and FDL 52, so um, you just kind of have to follow that dependency, and eventually it'll get to everything it needs, or uh, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy this into this directory to, so that it lives in the same place, and then run this test app and it will work because it can find the DOL it needs because they all live right here in that directory okay so in, in a nutshell that's how Windows uh, look for this dependency um, so when I'm gonna go ahead and delete mine but uh, that concludes our uh, introduction my introduction to uh, QT for Visual Studio I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching